You see, I am a descendant of the ancient Quiche Maya tribe of Guatemala. I am a child of mass persecution and generational migration. You see, my ancestors fled the jungles of oppression to the city. My grandmother was one of 15, womb of which only five survived to adulthood. And looking at this starvation, she travailed the desert of Mexico to enter this great nation. You see, we went from the Republic of Guatemala to the Republic of Brooklyn, from the literal jungle to the concrete jungle. And the reason why I tell this story is because we all have a story that's a part of the contributing narrative that is these United States of America. You see, 0.9% of this nation's indigenous we are a nation of immigrants. We are all children of migration, integration, and assimilation, and that's what makes us a great nation. But we hear otherwise. Individuals have become conduits of hate and discord, organizers of dissent. And I ask, why do you look at migrants as scapegoats to achieve your own political ends? So I say, when was his America great? Was it pre-slavery, pre-civil rights, or pre-labor rights? And who was America great for? Ladies and gentlemen, we are facing the novel social movement of our time, but who will raise up and who will answer the call? What's this generation's MLK or Rosa Parks or the Lord is worth thou, Cesar Chavez? There has been a leadership vacuum that has been formed, and who will fill it? Who will, he will come into that space because we love using terms like change agents, but do we live by those definitions? Are we really truly ready to go against the paradigm and the paradoxes and truly enact and be bold, contentious leaders of social movements because there's too much at stake? You see, families are being torn apart. Children are dying crossing the border. Hate crimes to undocumented go unreported, and veterans are being deported, and perhaps the greatest travesty of all, a possibility of a lost renaissance. You see, in today's America, valedictorians are being deported, are denied equal access to universities. We are deactivating a generation that can possibly come up with the cure for cancer, HIV, or develop the latest social app. But I know what you're thinking, but Caesar, those Mexicans, they aren't citizens. So let's do a small little exercise and imagine what does an immigrant look like? Where did they come from? Because as of 2014, they came from India, China, and Mexico. Whereas in 1960, they were coming from Italy, Germany, and Canada. We have to shed our own perceived biases in order to truly fashion public policy we have to have a shift in consciousness because this is not just a Hispanic issue. This is a human issue. This is an American issue. And it's on this generation to resolve. This is a part of a greater social global phenomenon in which the global south is entering the global north. And we need to form a collective, collaborative movement in order to further this delicate policy discussion. But what's happening? We have a growing demographic. 40% of the nation are minorities, 70% if you include women. A formidable coalition could be formed. Yet what is occurring? Nothing. I've been following this policy discussion for 11 years. Been a part of demonstrations in New York, New Mexico, DC, the entire US-Mexican border. Yet what do I hear? A pat in the back. I'm proud of you, Caesar. And nothing but more political rhetoric, band-aid solutions, and broken promises. But allow me to introduce a lurking variable, a very major and critical component to this policy labyrinth. You see, how is it if we want change, but 65% of America and elected officials come from a 30% white male demographic? We have an issue of a lack of diversity, ideals, ideas, and individual. And this is a bipartisan issue. And it's until we have a representative demographic democracy that we can truly see substantive change and issues like immigration and broader social movements would actually be policies of salience to policy entrepreneurs. And here's another statistic, 100%. 100% of us are American. We love this country. We came here to be a part of a greater social and broader collective union. But I look into this face. The faces here are the futures of America. And if we truly want to see substantive change, we have to treat each other equally. 
Because if not, we're only holding ourselves and our nation back. So I ask, who in this room would do something? Perhaps that's the reason why this talk is called a spark, so light it. Thank you.